So what I'm going to do is introduce myself. So I am Jen Burcham, and I am one of the managers at the University and Community Housing Services Office. So um, I actually help oversee everything for UCSB housing as well as community housing. So we have about 10,500 um, students live in the community, Isla Vista, Goleta, Santa Barbara. And then we have about 11,000 students that live in university owned housing. So today I'm gonna to go over all of your housing options um, for both community and UCSB housing. And if you have any questions at the end of my presentation, we'll kind of open things up um, for kind of a Q&A. So hopefully that, um, covers me and I'm super excited to have you here. So congratulations on being a transfer admit. Uh, I'm a UCSB alum. I graduated from UCSB in 2000. Um, I was a teacher here, an elementary school teacher here in Santa Barbara for about six years. And then I transitioned over to UCSB and I have been working here for over 15 years in housing and I love it. So um, welcome to Santa Barbara and I'm going to go ahead and get started with my presentation, and if you have questions, you can either pop them in chat or you can um, ask me at the end. So I'm going to share my screen. Let's see. You're not going to want to see my calendar. So here we go. Okay, I'm going to... I'm still letting people in. So just excuse me if I look a little distracted. Okay, so we are the University and Community Housing Service Office and we're part of um, a department on campus under housing called Residential and Community Living. So the services we provide um, for UCSB housing contracts and assignments we oversee all of the housing assignments and contracting for the residence halls, the university apartments, graduate housing, and family student housing. And then the other part of our office is the community housing portion of our office. And we have, oh, sorry. If you guys can remember to mute, that would be super helpful. Um, Sorry, you guys, trying to figure out. Okay, um, so for community housing, we have a rental listings website that I'll go over uh, during this presentation. We also do roommate conflicts. I do mediation for students who are having roommate conflicts or landlord conflicts with maybe um, a management company or uh, some sort of maintenance issue. We do one-on-one -on -one assistance with our staff to work with you about what your housing needs are. Um, we have educational programs. So I host programs all year long for students about how to find um, a place to live in the community, what, it, what you need to do in order to secure a lease. I do move out programs, subleasing programs, basically anything to educate you on becoming a successful renter in the area. We have forms and brochures, and we also have a success guide. So at that link underneath success guide, it's actually an online resource for you for the area to um, talk about your uh, renter rights and responsibilities. It'll also go over how to set up utilities in the area, any questions about habitability. So that's all online and you're welcome to check that out if you have time. So the transfer process. So if you are a new transfer, we're prioritizing all new transfers um, for a housing contract if you apply on time and you meet all of the deadlines. Just note that previous information, um, we had been telling transfer students that you would SIR and then you would be able to go straight to the contract. There was a little bit of an issue with the um, system and so you are still able to go straight to a contract, but you have to set up your UCSB net ID first. So on the steps to complete on um, this slide, two and three are gonna switch. So you will SIR by June 1st, you'll com complete your UCSB net ID and password as soon as you SIR, and then you can go straight to contract and that's available until June 15th. A lot of students ask me whether they should SIR right away or they should complete their housing contract right away. And I say, yes, I think it's better for you to SIR, 
get your NetID and password and then go straight into a housing application to complete your contract because you just don't want to forget. And then the June 15th deadline comes around and after June 15th, you'll no longer be prioritized for housing. So if UCSB housing is what you're really interested in, I highly recommend that you do that right away. So during the contract process, you will complete a personal preference form. And this will talk about, um, you know, just what you are looking for in terms of another roommate. So when you're filling out these lifestyle questions, just think about the type of roommate that you would want. So one of them is, you know, talks about whether you're a morning person or, um, you know, it'll talk really specifically about what your personality is like and what type of living environment you would like to live in. And I usually tell students to fill this questionnaire out by yourselves and not with your parents, because I think often students want to fill it out about what how they think their parents would want them to or how they think a roommate would want them to. So I just would love for you to fill this out and be as honest as possible, because that way we could be sure to connect you with a roommate who matches those lifestyle questions. There will be an electronic signature page that you will um, put your name and your perm number. I'm just going to note that please do not put a dash in your perm number, otherwise it won't submit. So make sure when you're signing that page to leave the dash out. And there's no deposit due. However, we do have a cancellation fee. So if you sign the contract and you decide that you want to live off campus, there will be a fee associated with your contract. So till July 15th, the fee is $100 to cancel. And then from July 15th to September 1st, it's $350 to cancel. After September 1st, it's $350. And sometimes we require a replacement to be found, but that's just going to depend on what our waiting list is like. So housing priority. So all students who apply for university housing have priority. So as a new transfer, you're going to have priority to get a, go straight to contract as long as you meet that June 15th deadline. So we highly encourage you to check your UCSB email daily, including your spam folder, just to make sure you don't miss any updates. A lot of times students forward your UCSB email to your personal email address. And I'm gonna suggest that you do not do that because sometimes really important emails or mass emails don't forward. And so students end up missing um, really important information. So I think what I have been telling students is to please forward your personal e email to your UCSB email address and do it that way. And just make sure that you're checking your UCSB email. I would check it in the morning and in the evening just to make sure you're not missing anything. And then always check your spam folder just to make sure that you're not missing any important things in there. Okay, so if you choose to live in university housing, there are certain amenities that are offered if you choose to live with us. So if you get it, you'll sign the contract by the due date, you'll be able to live with other transfer students, which I think is the best part about university owned housing is that everybody's coming and you're all in the same boat, so to speak. So everybody's a new transfer student. There's no security deposit. It's a nine month lease option, meaning that it'll start and your move in is usually the week before, it's gonna be the weekend before fall quarter starts. And then it ends right after spring quarter starts. They're fully furnished. It includes all utilities. We have resident assistants and lead staff that live and oversee the building and they host community events and programming. And I think it's just a great way for you to get settled and rooted in your new community. Sorry. Okay. I have a lot of open boxes on my screen. Um, how do rooms get assigned? So students who have a completed contract have to complete the contract by June 15th and you'll receive a contract completion email. Make sure you get that confirmation email because that's going to signify that you completed the process. If for some reason you don't receive that confirmation email, email our office so that we could check that everything was, um, everything was done correctly. Um, we will send email notification to you two to three weeks prior to move-in weekend that will have your assignment and your um, move-in information about what move-in is going to look like for you. 
I know a lot of students get concerned that they're signing a contract, but they don't know what their assignment is yet. That's the way our process works because we have to um, see how many contracts we have returned. And then we assign students based upon how many students we're needing to house. Again, you're gonna have to complete your net ID before you go to apply. So we have LLCs, um, it's a living learning community and these are um, specific communities if you wanna live with a certain group of people. And so we have LLCs in the residence halls but we also have LLCs in the apartments and the apartments, um, I have them listed here. We have Lavender Living, we have Gender Inclusive Housing, the Asian Pacific Islander Desi group, we have the Chicken X Latinx and the Black Scholars Floor. So if you want to be a part of an LLC, when you go through the contracting process and the personal preferences, there'll be an area where it says living learning community and you can mark which living learning co community you wanna live in. And there'll be a little bit, a text box for you to kind of write a little bit about why you wanna be a part of this community. And you'll find out if you got, um, approved to live in an LLC when you receive your assignment. Also going back to that, if you go to our website and you look up LLC or living learning communities in the apartments, they'll actually have really detailed descriptions about each of those so you can find out more information. A big question that comes in is, can I switch rooms during the year? And the answer is yes. So you can do a room change, but you will meet directly with your lead staff. So your lead staff or complex coordinator, they oversee your, each of the buildings of, in the areas for university apartments. And so you would set up a meeting with your lead staff or your complex coordinator for your building, and then they would work with you directly on a room change. And it will be dependent on space that we have available. But the way our process works now is that um, we would give you access to be able to see the rooms that are available and then for you to be able to choose which room you would like to live in how our roommates matched. So we actually go through um, your personal preferences and it's matched based on those personal preferences. It's actually done by a computer program. And I have to say that it's really highly successful. So um, we will match you based on your preferences and know that we also have a roommate group if you want to choose roommates beforehand. And the roommate group process closes on June 20th. So once you complete a contract, you'll get a contract confirmation email. And in that contract confirmation email will be a roommate group link. And you can fill out that link and you'll be able to um, choose other students by their net ID and password. And then they'll get an invitation to join your roommate group. And once they accept that invitation, then your roommate group is formed. So I just want you to know that priority is going to, uh, well, Roommate groups take priority over building preferences, if that makes sense. So a lot of students get really concerned that maybe um, maybe I'm living with Lou and Lou and I put different building preferences, but we have a roommate group. Our priority is to put the roommates group to, groups together first over your building preferences. So your building preferences don't necessarily need to match. We do also have um, mixed gender apartments as well. So if there's somebody that you wanna live with who is of a different gender, we do have that availability. And if you need more information on that, you can email our office. So meal plans are not um, a part of, sorry, my brain. Um, meal plans are not part of the part UCSB apartments because you have a full kitchen, but we do have um, off-campus meal plans. So if you wanted to purchase an off-campus meal plan, you can go into our dining um, off-campus meal plan webpage and you can sign up there and look at the pricing. Can transfer students live in the residence halls? The answer is yes. So when you're going through the contracting process, you'll be able to choose a residence hall space or an apartment space. Can we tour a UCSB apartment? So we used to have a model room available in San Joaquin, but unfortunately due to COVID, it's been closed. 
So I will be sure to update the transfer um, resource center and let them know if that becomes available for tours over the summer. I would highly recommend that you take the virtual tours that are available on our website, on our housing website, and you can go to each building and you can actually do a virtual tour of different rooms in the different buildings. Payment information. Sorry, there's a lot of information with UCSP housing. So all payments are made through BARC, which is the billing office. And if you, you're going to be billed quarterly, but you can set up a payment plan if you'd like to pay monthly, and you would do that directly through BARC. Okay, so now we're moving a little bit out of university housing apartments. And so we also offer family student housing. So there's a lot of students that are maybe transfer students that are maybe non-traditional or they're coming with families. And so students are able to apply for family student housing. Um, priority is always going to go to families with children first, and the waiting time is about three to six months. And then it will go to families without children, and the wait time is about six to 12 months. Family student housing is the one area where you can actually get on the waiting list before you SIR. So if you're kind of wondering whether or not you're going to go to UCSB and you have a family, I would say to go ahead and get on the waiting list and then that way your, your name's in line. And then if you decide not to come, we can cancel that, but at least you're signed up. So now I'm gonna move into the community housing part of our presentation. So for community housing, if you're choosing not to live within UCSB housing, uh, most a lot of our students live in Isla Vista, which is the town right next door to UCSB. And we have a rental listings website. So you can log on to our website and it's like a glorified Craigslist. The only people that can log in are people associated with UCSB with a NetID and password. So you'll be able to go on here and you can view available rentals. You can also view people who are looking for a housemate and you can look for sublets or post a sublet as well. The move-in timeline for community is going to look a lot different than UCSB housing. So most of the leases in Isla Vista are going to be about 12 months. I'm going to say not exactly 12 months. Most of them are going to be about 11 and a half months. Most students are going to be moving out the week of the weekend of June 13th, 14th, which is, um, or I think it's a little bit different this year. Hold on. I'm going to look at my calendar really fast. They're going to be moving out the 18th and 19th, which is graduation weekend. Oops, sorry. Um, and then there's about a two week turnover period after the massive move out in June. And then most leases were gonna start the end of June to the end of June, July to July, August to August, or September to September. Move-in dates will be on your lease. So when you're looking at your lease, you can look and see when your move-in date is. Most often that's not negotiable. Typically the move-in date's non-negotiable. But if you see that the end date is maybe on a day that you have finals or um, you're graduating or there's something about the end date that's not going to work, I would say that sooner than later, when you see that, to try to negotiate with your management company to see if you can extend it out a couple of days. If you're not going to be here for summer, you can sublease your space. I would be sure when you're looking at your lease um, to really check with your company to make sure what their policies are for subletting. And then we also have a sublease form and we have a sublease smarts guide because a lot of our students are just learning about what the subletting process is. So that would mean that if you're not gonna be here for summer, you'll wanna find somebody to move into your space to, to pay the rent while you're not living there. Other students are posting on our Facebook groups. Um, these aren't associated with our office, but I am an admin on both of these. And so I do look um, at them. I usually go in in the morning and in the afternoons to kind of make sure that there's nothing that looks suspicious or, um, you know, kind of if somebody emails me and is looking for something, I'll kind of look through there to see if, you know, what's available. So it's ID housing for UCSB students. And then UCSB housing are two of the Facebook page that I'm admins on. And so you can post an ISO. So if you're looking for to live with other a group of girls, you can kind of say, 
in search of um, a, a living arrangement with other females. This is my rent max. And then people will contact you directly if they have space. And then you can also go on there and message people if they say that they have space available in their houses. Um, for our community, I highly re recommend you review your lease. I know a lot of them can be really long, but it's super important that you and your roommates read through your lease from beginning to end and then mark down any questions that you might have about the lease. And you could either contact our office to go over that with you, or you can go over that with your leasing company before you sign. I just um, want to make sure that all students know before you're signing a lease you, that you read through everything to make sure you know what you're getting into. We also have a move in move out videotaping service. We used to go into all of the, not all, but a, a lot of apartments and houses and students would hire us to go in and videotape, do a move in, move in, move in and move out videotape. Because of COVID, we're no longer doing that. But I'm gonna highly recommend that if you're living in the community that you do this yourself. So I have a link down there and it's a how-to guide on how to do a move in, move out videotape of your place and this will secure your deposit. So what you'll do is you'll, before, when you get your keys, before you move anything in, you'll start recording from the front door and they'll go all the way through your house. So you'll get everything. You'll open and close the windows. You'll get every screen to make sure there's no holes. You'll get, you'll, um, you'll get any um, get the link. damages that um, may be pre-existing. So that's the whole point is that you're trying to video and get evidence of any pre-existing damages so that you won't be charged for them at the end. And then when you move out, you'll do the same thing. So after you have everything moved out and before you, it's all clean and before you turn your keys back in, you do another videotape of it. And I used to, I do security deposit disputes and this just makes my life so much easier to have the documentation because it'll just prove that things were there before so you won't be charged for them, but it will also video anything, any damages that were there that weren't there before too. Um, so just make sure to do this. The Transfer Edge program. This is a really great program for all of you new transfers. It runs from July 31st to September 10th and it, you will be housed in one of our apartments. And it's a way for you to come about a month early. You'll take classes in summer session B and you'll do a lot of programming. So you'll get to know the campus, you'll know, meet different departments, you'll get to meet other transfer students. It's a really great experience. So if you're interested in- What am I so? Sorry, can you mute? Um, and so if you're interested in this, I would highly recommend you just, you can Google search UCSB Transfer Edge and it'll give you a lot more information. This is our contact information. So there's our phone number and we answer our phones and our doors are open for walk-ins from 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. and we are open for lunch. And then that's our main email address. I highly recommend if you have any questions, just email us. Our, my staff is so amazing and we answer every question. And so don't um, guess. I would just say if you have any, any um, questions, just ask us and we've, we're answering them all day long. And we're located on the third floor of the university center. So if you go into where the bookstore, the campus store is, on the left-hand side, you'll see a staircase that'll go upstairs and we're located right there. And that's the end of my long presentation. So I'm gonna stop my screen share and then we can open it up to questions. Nicholas, you could go ahead and unmute and I can answer your question. Um, is there a place I could get these, uh, the links and just that, like all compiled. Yes. So this presentation is actually going to be sent. I gave it to the Transfer Student Resource Center, and they can email this whole presentation out to everybody who was on this um, this presentation. So you'll have all of those links. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Thank okay. you. Yeah. No problem. Charlene. Hi. Um. So I had a question about the housing. So uh, basically, as long as so um. 
on my uh, application, I noted that I was going to do university apartment. Okay. And so as long as I meet the deadline by June 15th, I should have priority, which as long as I have like the net ID and everything, all that filled out. Yeah, correct. So if you um, SIR and you set up your net ID, then you'll go straight to a contract. You'll mm -hmm. fill out the personal preferences. You'll sign the contract form. You'll get an email saying uh, with a contract confirmation. Once you get that contract confirmation, that's your signal that you are going to be housed with us in mm -hmm. a university apartment space. Okay. And then my other question is, so do we have the option of being able to be put in like a single room if we want or like, so singles, I know most it's like doubles. Yeah. Right? Everything's going to be doubles or triples. Our singles that we have are available are actually really limited and they are going to anybody with a special housing accommodation mm -hmm. who has a medically approved need. Okay. So that would have to be shown with like proof of like doctors and all that mm -hmm. stuff. Okay. Yes. Um, and just to be honest, like even out in Isla Vista, everything's typically shared room. So I know as a transfer student, you're, um, you know, you're used to having your own space yeah. and, um, a lot of students get really nervous about that, but you really adapt pretty easily. And most often you're not, you're in your room to sleep and it's really nice to just have roommates and you mm -hmm. all hang out in the big, um, living room area or you're on campus. So it really, for students who are concerned about that, it hasn't been a huge, it never really is a huge issue once they get here. Okay. And then as far as like being able to choose, like as far as university apartments, are you able to choose where you want to go specific? Because so, I, I'm interested in uh, Sierra Madre. So based on your, prefer your preferences, mm -hmm. when you're completing your contract, you'll do personal preferences and then you'll do building preferences. We, tr we, there's no guarantees that we can get because let's say there's 5,000 of you who all want mm -hmm. Sierra Madre. So we have to kind of see who's, um, where everybody wants. So we can't guarantee preferences, but we do our best. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Samuel, you're up. Yes. I had a question. Uh, somebody put in the group chat already. Um, say we wanted to do a study abroad next semester. How would the nine month lease work for the on-campus apartments? Yeah, so if anybody who's going on EAP or an EAP sponsored program, um, which is EAP or UCDC, you can actually cancel your contract for no fee. So once you cancel, um, there'll be no fee, you'll be released from your lease. And then if let's say you're, I'm just gonna to put this out there. Let's just say you're going, you wanna go abroad for the winter. So you would um, sign your contract for the fall, before you leave, you would cancel your contract for the winter. And then while you're abroad, you'll apply for a spring housing contract and it's pending space, but most often we have space in the spring. Well, okay, thank you. Sure, no problem. Sophia? Hi, um, so if we like have a question about that community housing, like the resources that you gave us to find off campus, do we just email your contact that you gave us in the future slide, in the uh, previous slide? Are you wanting to look for community housing? Is that what you mean? Um, well, I don't know, just to see my options, like the off-campus housing that you provide, like that website that shows you. How yeah, we so we, um, so the rental listing and all, pop it. Lou, can you pop that in chat, the rental listings website? Um, Lou will pop the rental listing website link in the chat and as well. And then there's the Facebook group. So it's Facebook. You'll go on Facebook. And I know a lot of students don't have Facebook and most of them just signed up for Facebook to get into these groups, but it's UCSB housing and Ivy housing. And okay. then also, um, my friend Robin, who works in the AS Legal Resource Center, she actually monitors one called UCSB Housing Search. So that's another one as well. Okay. And then Lou just dropped the rental listing website in chat. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Randall, you're up. Hi, um, I think I have a couple questions. So first okay. off, um, so... For just to clarify for transfers, we're not just limited to like the transfer apartments, but we're also able to stay at the residence halls. So when we're doing the application for preferences, for building preferences, um, we can also put 
the residence halls, correct? You actually would have to choose one. So when you're going oh. into the contracting process, the when you're applying, you have to choose whether you want to to receive a contract for the residence halls or the apartments. You can't do both. Okay. And then my second question would be, so as, I mean, this is kind of like, I guess it's really extra, but um, for the university apartments, they have, um, would it be like, a parking pass for both the apartments and the school or is it like two separate? So all parking is going to go through our TPS, which is transportation parking services. And you would mm -hmm. actually apply for a parking permit based upon where you live. So Sierra Madre and San Joaquin, Sierra Madre has parking, San Joaquin doesn't, but most students apply for the Sierra Madre permit. Um, Santa Inez has parking. So you would actually apply depending on where you get assigned, um, but that would be a parking permit for where you're assigned, not for campus. And because you're so close to campus, most students don't drive from their apartment to campus. They walk or they ride their bike. And then last question. So uh, I think you briefly mentioned this. So if we have a building preference, but then we find a roommate group beforehand, does that mean our building preference is just kind of in the air? We well, just... we would, your room, your roommate group um, will always take priority over building preference, depending on where we have space for your group to be able to fit. Yeah. So, well, you know, we obviously try to do both, but it depends how everything shakes out. And we just don't know, won't know that until we start doing assignments during the summer. Okay. Uh, Neville, Neville, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Uh, my How question was regarding if we needed to have additional paperwork for an ESA and if uh -huh. that would affect um, like housing opportunities. So what I would do is go ahead. If you're going to be applying for UCSB housing, go through the whole contracting process and then email our office for the ESA paperwork. And then you can do that um, after. So I wouldn't wait to sign a contract because you haven't done all of your ESA paperwork. Okay. If that makes sense. Yes, yes, it makes sense. Okay. Thank you. Cool. Uh, Jules? Hi. Um, I have a question about like the rates and stuff. So on like, I'm looking at Sierra Madre and San Joaquin and in like the description, it says that there's two people per bedroom, but on the rates page, it says it's up to three. Right. So in each of those, there's going to be one triple in each of those apartments. Okay. So, so one of the rooms, so there'll be one triple room and then the others will be doubles. Okay. So, so when you're going so does through that, your, so like So when you're going through your preferences, you're gonna choose. So when you're going through your building preferences, you'll say, let's say I do San Joaquin for my building and then you'll go to room preferences and you could do a double, you could do a triple so you can choose. Okay. So just know that really, you know, and I, I just don't want you all to know that, that we do, can't guarantee preferences. We try as hard as we can to, to give students at least one of their preferences, but it really depends on our numbers at the end, which we won't know until after June 15th, um, how everything shakes out in terms of numbers. Okay. Yeah. I was just wondering because the rates are very different and like I had gotten a brochure and the prices are different than what the website rates are. I'm not sure if the website, I haven't, I actually didn't go on there this week and I'm not sure if it, um, if there, I think the new rates are on our website. So maybe the brochure you had may have been the brochure from last year but I would go based on what is posted online because I think those are the most updated rates. Okay. So, okay, sorry, one more clarification. So for like, if we choose a three bedroom, three occupants per room, that means there's like, could be a nine total up to nine people in that apartment? Correct. Okay, got it. Yeah, okay. and the, the spaces, I know it sounds like a lot, but they're pretty big. I don't know if you, yeah. I've been in them, but you can see, um, 
the virtual tour, but the rooms are really large and there's a huge living room area and a big kitchen and most of them have balconies and they're really nice. Okay, thank you. Sure, no problem. Keaton, you're up. Hi there, I was just wondering, um, this may be a dumb question, but I was confused about like, what's the primary difference between the apartments and the residence halls? Oh, that is not a dumb question. That's a great question and I should have answered that. So the residence halls are primarily for first and second years and the apartments are usually for third and fourth years. So the residence hall difference is that there's no kitchens and you it actually comes with a meal plan. So um, when you look on pricing online, you're going to be like, whoa, the price is so high, but that be, that's because it includes meals. So you'll be able to eat, if you have a res hall contract, you'll be able to eat at any of the residence halls based upon your dining plan. Um, it, and then also because you don't have a kitchen, most often it's just a room. So there isn't going to be um, like a living room area where in the university apartments, it's like a full apartment, it has a kitchen and your bathroom and a living room area. The res halls, it's typically going to be a room. And then on the floor, you'll share a bathroom. So it's a community bathroom. Okay. So those are the primary differences. Got it. Okay. That makes sense. And I know sense. I say primarily, like first and second years primarily live in the res halls, but we have a lot of transfer students that also choose to live there because it may be your first time um, living out of the house and maybe you want a little bit of more of a you know um like support just in terms of meals and stuff and then we also have transfers that are coming in that are younger so um you know some people transfer when they're 19 or 18 and so they're wanting to live in the residence halls okay um are you required to get a meal plan if you live in the residence halls yes you are it's part of okay. the it's part of living in the residence halls okay Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Tracy, you're up. Tracy, can you hear me? Oh, um, Jules, I think I answered your question already. Did you have another question? Um, yeah, I just had a fast one, if no one else had one. Um, just So when we're doing the housing contract if for the undergraduate apartments, do we have to choose the meal plan right then or is that a separate? The, the apartments do not have a meal plan. Okay, so we sign up for the off-campus one like in a separate process? Yeah. Okay. yeah, you can choose an off-campus meal plan and that's completely separate and you can add that on anytime throughout the year. Okay, perfect, thank you. Okay, Keaton, you're up. Oh, sorry, I forgot to lower my hand. No, it's okay, Sophia. Hi, I have a quick question again. Sure. Um, well, I have two. For the rental listing website, um is there a way that we can book an appointment for guidance and how would we deal with roommates for that situation so typically for community housing you're going to be searching there for um okay so if you're looking for a shared environment like with, like you want to move into an already established household i would look at housemates and then I would also go on the Facebook pages because that's where you're going to find people that are looking for housemates to move in. But if okay. you're looking for a vacant, um, vacant, like apartment, like let's say you have two other people that you want to live with and you find a one bedroom in Isla Vista, you could look under vacant listings on the rental listings page and then you can also email our office because we are trying to create like a running list of vacancies that we have and so we can send that to you as well okay and what did you what was housemates again is that just a part of the website or? yeah it's part of the website so when you log in you can look at the housemates tab mm -hmm. but to be honest i think a lot of people are really just going to the facebook pages that's where Got i'm it. seeing like the most action is students posting on there looking for potential roommates. So people usually do that and then they'll go to the website if like they need additional help, but exactly. the first is Facebook. Yep. Okay, and then another question for, um, like if we're doing the residence uh, or the transfer apartments, um, that's all on like the steps to enrollment in our portal, right? Like once right. we're done with the net ID, it'll bring us to the housing application. And that's where we put like our preferences in the contract. Yep. Yeah. So you would go to, once you set up your net ID, you're actually going to go to our website 
and go to the application link and Lou will drop that in the chat where you'll go and you can apply there. Okay. And once, ju just a heads up about that. Um, what did you say it was called? Uh, the steps to enrollment. So yeah. if you sign something in the community, your housing, it'll say housing it's going to stay red because that's tied to university housing. It's not tied to community housing. So if you sign something in the community and you've already secured housing, a lot of students freak out because on steps to enrollment, that's, that box is red and they're like, but I have housing. Just know to ignore it because that means that you've secured, as long as you've secured something, that that's tied to UCSB housing, not community housing. Does that make sense? Oh. Yeah. Okay. So it'll kind of lead us to like the website and the application link all, all there. You know, I'm not sure what's linked to the steps of enrollment because that's not through our housing department. So I would go to the link that Lou, I think he was going to drop it in the box. Um, there it is. He just dropped it. The, the, the link for a, that says apply. I would go through that link because that's going to take you to, you go to new transfers or transfer students, and then you'll be able to apply directly there. Okay. Okay. Got it. Thank you so much. Sure. No problem. Emma, you're up. Um, yeah. I have a question. If she gets detailed or too detailed in the roommate survey, does that reduce your chance of being matched up and hence reduce your chance of being offered a housing contract? Nope. Not at all. The okay. The preferences are already outlined. Like there isn't anything there that you're going to input to us. It's you just answering these questions, these personal preference questions. Oh, you just kind of check boxes off or something. Yes, exactly. Okay. okay. So everyone does the same survey, check the same box off. There's no um, written statement or something like nope, that. So, not okay. At all. okay, great. Thank you. Sure. Brennan. So for the transfer edge, for the six weeks you stay in the apartment, would you stay in that apartment after the six week program or would you, you actually wouldn't, you would be actually moved into a different space after the six week program. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Uh, Madison. Hi, um, my question is, um, do you have to use the provided furniture or like, can you bring your own? And like, if you do bring your own, are you able to like put the other stuff in like a storage or give it back? I don't know. Yeah, unfortunately you, you can't remove any of the furniture. The furniture stays. Okay. Yeah, and Thank just you. so you know, the beds <laughs> are twin extra long. So if you get a housing contract and you're shopping and you're getting your sheet sets, make sure to get twin extra long because a lot of students come with just regular twin sheets and they're so bummed because they won't fit. Um, you guys, uh, you can kind of change the configuration of the rooms. We just ask that you don't take furniture apart. If there's something that you need um, furniture wise, like that will call for it taking apart. I don't think there's anything as I'm thinking about it, but if you do, that would actually be a work maintenance request. So we ask that you just don't, don't take furniture apart, but you can kind of configure it for how you would like to set up your room. Okay, thank you. Sure, Charlene. Yeah, I had a question about, uh, so with preferences, are you able to indicate like, you know, co-ed and like strictly female only? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And All typically, right. unless you ask for a mixed gender roommate group, you're going to be assigned a apartment with the same gender that you have indicated on your um, housing profile. Okay. All right. That makes sense. Thank you. Okay. Sure. Uh, Malcolm, did you have another question or did I call on you already? Hi. Uh, no, you did not. Um, and I'm not sure if you've answered this, but how exactly will we get the video uh, of this recording? Like, I know you said it's on the Transfer Student Housing Center. No, the transfer student. So I'm going to, once the recording's done, uh -huh. I'm going to send the recording and a copy of the slideshow presentation to Melissa over at the Transfer Resource Center, and she will email it out to all of you. Okay, so we don't have to do anything. We'll just get an email? Yes. Okay, cool. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, Hi, I have a couple oh. questions. Sorry, I wasn't able to raise my hand. Oh, no, it's okay. Go ahead. 
Um, so what are the deadlines again for community housing, ver housing versus UCSB? So housing. community housing is just all year round. There's no deadline there. For UCSB okay. housing, the um, you need to SIR by June 1st and you need to submit your housing application to get a contract by June 15th. Okay. And the roommate group deadline is June 20th. But again, I would highly yes. recommend I would highly recommend that you go to our housing website and you'll go to apply and new transfer students and all the deadlines are listed out for exactly where what you need to do by when. Okay, and then I have one more question. What's the difference? I know you briefly talked about it, but how far are the community how far is community housing from the university? Is it close? Is it it's, more like so it depends where houses? you're it depends where you're wanting to live. So Typically, UCSB students live in Isla Vista, and Isla Vista is right next to the campus, and it's one and a half rectangular miles. Um, and from the far end of IVE, it actually is where San Joaquin and Sierra Madre are. And if you were to ride your bike from one of those complexes to campus, it's about 10 to 15 minutes. And then there's buses that also run from those areas every 20 minutes. Okay. And sorry, one more question. Is no, the community okay. housing something that transfer students usually choose or is UCSB housing more popular? You know, it just depends on what you're looking for. I it really, it, I can't really say one way or another. I know we set, we house, you know, a certain percentage of transfer students while well, the rest choose to go to the community. So it's really up to you and what you want. Okay, and sorry, I'm last question. Um, for the community housing, are you choosing roommates solely through the Facebook group or is that also helped like by the university? Or that's just not by the, the university. Group? So if you okay. choose to do community housing, that's actually totally separate from UCSB housing. I just kind of help students look for housing and oversee that because we have so many students that live in Isla Vista and out in the community. Okay, all right, thank you. Sure. Um, Let's see, Ava. So I I realized that you mentioned that the, the apartments, um, there's like, um, it's not just transfer students, any UCSB students um, who choose to live there can live there. But I did also realize that you mentioned that um, there's uh, the transfers get housed like together. There's so I was just wondering if it's like the floor is all transfer students, like how does it work? It's mixed. So we house about 40% of our continuing student population. So there's going to be some continuing students who are, um, you know, maybe incoming, going to be third years or going to be fourth years next year. And they're mixed with within transfer students. But again, your preferences will match up with those preferences as we're living, as we're putting students together. Um, Samuel? Yes, it's for the LLCs that you mentioned. Do they have those in every uh, building or is it just in certain ones? It's in certain buildings. So if you go onto the website and just Google search UCSB LLCs, it'll tell you which buildings house which of those um, communities. Oh, thank you. Sure. Malcolm, did you have another question? Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to lower my hand. It's okay. Charlene, did you have a question? Sorry, my hand too. I need it's to lower okay. it. Fiona, did you have a question? I also forgot to lower my hand. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Brooke, did you have a question? I did. Um, I was wondering how the housing worked for parenting students who um, need to enroll in the summer program. So for for students who have kids, is that what you're asking? Yes. Um, then I would apply for family student housing because that's the only area that you would be able to live with uh, for families. Before, so that's available for the summer program as well? It, I, I know because that would be, it would depend on, that's a great question actually. I'm the, off the top of my head, the apartments for transfer edge are only going to be available for um, single students. 
but I know that they have a virtual that you could do it virtually too. So if you are in family student housing that you can connect, still connect with the programming. Um, but if you can email our office, I think that would be the best because then I could get a clearer answer. Okay, thank you. Sure. Sophia. Hi, I'm so sorry for, I don't know if you've already said this, but when you said that you could help with like just learning more about subleasing or searching, where can we find your contact? So you can email our office directly and Lou will drop our email in the, um, the chat, but I think you should, you could call our office too. If you just call our office, my staff's on and they'll be able to answer any questions, specific questions that you have. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Sophia, did you have another question? No. Wow. Those were all great questions. Kalani, I just have to say you're the only one that has your video on. So like this whole time I've been like, hey. <laughs> so um, just know that we're here and I know it could be, it is so stressful and there's so many different things that you're being required to do. So if you have a question, we're here to answer. So just make sure to call our office, email our office. If you need information, even about something that doesn't have to do with housing, we can most likely find the answer for you. Um, it's just nice to know that you could call our office and get a human to talk to. Um, I have the best staff ever and everybody's super friendly. And we also have student interns. So they were new transfers or freshmen here and they're working in my office answering questions. Um, so if you are looking for a job for next year, you can come work for me. So let me know if, um, are there any other questions before we sign off for the afternoon? No, I wanted to thank Lou for answer. Oh, Nicholas coming in. Uh, I just, I had an unrelated question about just um, transfer uh, credit and how, how, where exactly when do I find out about what classes of mine transferred and that is, about actually, that? that is a great question. And unfortunately, I don't know the answer, but I'm going to recommend that you connect with the Transfer Resource Center. Melissa there okay. is amazing and she'll be able to tell you everything you need to know about credits and all of how all of that works. Okay. All right. Oh, uh, does she have like an email you can put in the chat maybe? Uh, yeah, let me, hold on. Sorry. Let me go into my email and I'll drop it in the chat. Give me one second. I see a lot of people are going to need jobs. So just know I'm here for you. Um, I'll, I usually just, if you're looking for jobs, I'll just, this is totally on a tangent while I'm looking for this email, but if you are looking for campus jobs, there is a website called, um, sorry, I'm trying to multitask. Her name's Melissa Chavez, Nicholas, and I'm putting it in here right now. So there's a website called Handshake, UCSB Handshake, and you can Google search it, and it's where campus posts tons of jobs. Um, the best job on campus is, is mine, obviously in my office, because we're really fun. But I would also look at campus dining. It's a great opportunity to work in campus um, on campus and they work around your schedule like my office does, but it also includes food while you work. So that's also a good one to look at. <laughs> Gabe, I doubt it, but the food is really good. Um, so I think, um, you should come work for me if you're interested. I will be posting. We're probably going to be looking for people to work in our office come um, fall. So that will be up on UCSB Handshake. Just a little plug. But yeah, I'm really excited for you all to be future gauchos here or gauchos now because you're all going to be here. Feel free to stop by our office anytime and come say hi. I'm usually there on Tuesday, Wednesdays and Thursdays. Um, thanks to Lou for answering all the questions in chat.